Hello guys, so we are going to learn about capacitor and dielectrics. In this topic, we have three subtopics. The first one is capacitance and capacitors in series and parallel. 2.2, we have charging and discharging of capacitors. And last one, 2.3, we have capacitors with dielectrics. Alright, let's start with the first subtopic which is uh, capacitance and capacitors in series and parallel. So in this subtopic, we have three learning outcomes to cover that is to define capacitance, to derive the effective capacitance of capacitors in series and parallel and last one is to derive energy stored in a capacitor. Alright, so what is actually a capacitor? So as you can see, this is how a capacitor looks like. So it's actually a device that is capable of storing electric charges or electric potential energy. It consists of two conducting plates. So as you can see here, we have two metal plates that is separated by small air gap or a thin insulator that we call as dielectric. So we have two metal plates. So in the middle here, we have small air gap or we fill with dielectric. Okay. Almost all electronics use a capacitor in each circuit, like in on-off switches, computer keyboard, and etc. So this is an example of how capacitor looks like inside the computer keyboard. This is the symbol for a capacitor. So we have this one or this one. So the first learning outcome is to define capacitance. The capacitance of a capacitor is defined as the ratio of the charge on either plate to the potential difference between them. So by equation, we have C is equals to Q over V, where C is the capacitance in farad. Q is the charge on one of the plate in coulomb, and V is the potential difference between plate and the unit is volt. Capacitance is also known as the ability of a capacitor to store charge and the unit of capacitance is farad or coulombs per volt since Q is coulomb and V is volt so we have coulomb per volt. Capacitance is a scalar quantity and always a positive quantity. Alright, the next learning outcome is to derive the effective capacitance of capacitors in series. Here we have three capacitors C1, C2 and C3 that is connected in series with a power supply or a battery. So in order for us to know what is the value of the equivalent capacitance, meaning that when C1, C2 and C3 combine as one capacitor, we want to know what is the value. So here is derivation. So the charges Q on all the three capacitors are the same. Q1 is equals to Q2 is equals to Q3, meaning that each capacitor will have the same amount of charge. The total potential difference across capacitors C1, C2 and C3 are V total is equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3, where V total is the value of the battery voltage. Hence, the derivation of effective or equivalent capacitance is equals to, just now we have V total, so V total is equals to Q total over C total. Remember, we have the formula C is equals to Q over V, and then as we rearrange, we're going to have V is equals to Q over C. So here we have Q total over C total. So V1 gonna be Q1 over C1 plus next Q2 over C2 plus Q3 over C3. And then we know that Q1 is equals to Q2 is equals to Q3. Hence we can cancel out each other all the values of Q. Hence we're gonna have 1 over C effective or the C total is equals to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So this is the formula that we're going to use to calculate the effective capacitance for capacitors in series. 
And then, please remember that we are calculating for C effective, not 1 over C effective. So, don't forget to leave your answer as C effective. We also need to derive the effective capacitance of capacitors in parallel. Here we have C1, C2 and C3 that is connected in parallel with a battery for a certain voltage. So now we want to calculate what is the equivalent capacitance. So in this case, the total charges Q on the equivalent capacitor is calculated as Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. The potential difference across each capacitor in the parallel is the same as the supply voltage. V total, which is the battery voltage, will be equals to the V1, equals to V2, and equals to V3. Hence, the derivation of effective or the equivalent capacitance, we're gonna use the total charge Q. So remember, C is equals to Q over V. As we rearrange, we're gonna have Q is equals to CV. Hence, we're going to have Q total as C effective or C total times V total is equals to Q1 which is C1 times V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3. And then, we also know that the potential difference is all the same so we can cancel out the V and we left with C effective is equals to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So this is the formula that we're going to use to calculate the capacitance for capacitors in parallel. Last one, the learning outcome is to derive energy stored in a capacitor. A charged capacitor stores electrical energy. So the energy stored in a capacitor will be equal to the work done to charge it. When the switch is closed, charges begin to accumulate on the plates. A small amount of work, which is DW, is done in bringing a small amount of charge, which is DQ, from the battery to the capacitor. Here we have the derivation. DW is equals to VDQ. And we know that V is equals to Q over C. And then we can substitute this into the formula. So we have DW is equals to Q over C DQ. We can integrate this one. We're going to have W is equals to 1 over C Q DQ. And then we have the limitation from 0 to maximum Q. So 1 over C Q squared over C. So this is the value of the work done. As we substitute the value of V is equals to Q over C, we're going to have another two formula to calculate the energy stored. Hence, we come out with three formula here. Thus, the energy stored in a charge capacitor is calculated as 1 over 2 Q squared over C or 1 over 2 C V squared or 1 over 2 Q V depends on the information that you have.